This demonstration will show you how to use the Copy List Item Wizard within a K2 workflow. The Copy List Item Wizard is helpful in any business process that requires copying a list item or group of list items from one SharePoint list to another list automatically inside of a K2 workflow. One example where you could use it is in a process designed to manage job postings for an organization that requires posting jobs internally for a period of time, then releasing them or copying them to a public viewable list. Let's take a look at this example specifically as it makes use of the copy list item step. The data setup for this example will use two separate lists for the job posting items. One list will contain all job postings for display internally called internal job postings. The other list will be used to house a copy of job postings released for display to the public called external job postings. Each list will organize the postings by department. So I've set up a simple page that allows a human resources employee to manage the internal postings by department and run a workflow to copy all postings that are set for release for a specific department and are not already copied to the external list. And since I'm configuring the workflow to run by department, I've created the K2 application under the department's SharePoint list. So let's take a look at what I've pre-configured in this workflow so far. The first thing I've done is configured this workflow to be started manually from a selected department list item. And within this workflow, the first step will use the copy list item wizard. So to get that on the design canvas, you can select it from the list items group in the ribbon menu at the top of the page under the workflow steps tab. Upon dropping the workflow step in the empty slot on my canvas, the first window begins the steps to define the reference to the list item or items that you want to copy. To configure the copy list items step, there are two paths available to get to the reference to the list item or items you need. Let's take a look at the Browse to List Item option first, which allows you to plug in filter values to help the wizard find the specific list items. When you use this option, the list item reference will only be available inside this wizard, which means you'll have to run the same configuration steps for the Update List Item step that fires next in this workflow. The list items for this workflow live under a subsite called Human Resources in the Denalix Portal Site Collection, so I'll ensure that the Site Collection setting is set to the Portal Site, and then I'll select the Human Resources subsite. From here, I know the list items are in the Internal Job Postings list, so I'll select that, and then we'll move on to the next window. On the Specify Filters window, you can plug in as many filter values as you need here by using the Context Browser fields or entering in values to help the wizard find one specific list item or multiple items that match the filter. I want to perform work on the job postings for the department that the user selected, so I'll use the title column from the department's item reference in the Context Browser by dragging it over to the department field in the drop window. Make sure to put a check in the checkbox next to each desired field that you want to include in the filter so it's enabled for use. I also want to make sure I'm only copying something that is marked OK to release, so I'll set this field to Yes. And finally, I want to make sure I don't copy anything that is already released for this department, so I'll set the Released filter to No. As I mentioned earlier, following this configuration path only allows this wizard to access this particular reference to the list items. I have an update list item wizard that follows the copy wizard that would also need to be configured in the exact same way. I pre-configured the get list item reference wizard in a previous workflow step to make a reusable reference with the same filter settings we just set to get to the list items, and I called it internal job postings reference. So from here, I'm actually going to back up a couple windows and show you how to use that reference in this wizard. Now, in looking at the copy list item wizard, I can select to use the internal job postings reference by enabling the use a list item that is referenced in this workflow configuration setting. On the next window, I can select which site collection my destination lives in. So in this example, I can leave it set to the portal site. Make note at the bottom of this window, if you have a folder in the destination list created where you want this item to land, you can enter it in here. Moving on, in this case my external list lives in Human Resources. 
and from there I'll select the external job postings list. The last window in this wizard asks you to specify property values for the copied list items. Make note of the message at the bottom of this window. Values of matching fields are copied from the source list item unless new values are specified. So you can change information by entering in text and dropping fields from the context browser in the property boxes. It will change the values of the copied list item should you have the need. Otherwise, leave them empty and it will just copy the values from the original items over. The only thing I'll do here on this window is set the expiry date to be approximately six months out from the time the copy step fires by using the inline function under the date and time group in the context browser called add days. And I'll combine that with the now function and then add 182 days to it. The last thing to consider on this window is the create item reference box at the bottom. If you have a workflow that needs to access the copied list items in their new list later on in the workflow, you can select this option and give it a meaningful name. At this point, I'm not going to use it in this workflow, so I'll uncheck it for now. That's all there is to the copy list items step, and I've already configured the update list items step in a similar fashion. So I'm going to save this window and deploy the workflow, then we can go check it out in action. I'll start off by looking at the external job postings list to show you that it's currently empty. Again, this list is the destination for the copy event that fires off in the workflow. So next, let's go over to the internal job postings management page. This page gives a little more context to the actions by allowing us to view the internal postings by filtering on a department. The sales department has two job listings that have gone past the expiration date but have not yet been released to the external list. So let's run this workflow off the sales department list item by selecting K2 workflows from the item context menu to run the workflow manually. And from the K2 workflows page, I'll select released expired internal job postings workflow and run it against the sales department. This should run fairly quickly. So once it completes, we'll jump over to the external job postings list. Here you can see that the two listings that were designated to be copied are listed externally now. Also take note that because the workflow step runs as the K2 service account, the created by column is set to SharePoint app. And know that you do have the ability to change the credentials for any event that runs in the workflow by right clicking on the event and selecting configure credentials, then setting them to the account that you want to run the event under. When doing this, that account will appear in the created by and modified by columns. The last thing we'll check on is back in the internal job postings list. You can see that the two list items still exist in this list because we did a copy. We would like to thank you for watching this demo on how to use the copy list item wizard. We hope you have a better understanding of how and when you can use this workflow step within processes used by your organization.